The triangle is one of many auxiliary percussion instruments used in the modern orchestra. This simple instrument is often called unpitched because it is not easy to pick out and hum along with the sound of a triangle. However, more accurately, the triangle should be called of indeterminate pitch because the sound is made up of so many frequencies so close together that it's impossible to pick out just one. The modern triangle first appeared in the 16th century, however it wasn't incorporated into the orchestra until around the 18th century when Mozart and Beethoven began incorporating it into their scores. The triangle is classified as an idiophone. This means that the entire instrument vibrates in order to make sound. To facilitate this motion, the triangle is suspended from a rope or a cord, thus allowing it to spin and vibrate in any way freely. Now let's break down the motion of the triangle. This instrument essentially has three modes of vibration. The first of these, transverse oscillations, is when these three bars of the triangle warp along the plane of the triangle. This leads to an opening and a closing motion of this gap as these two uh, legs of the triangle move together and apart. The second mode of vibration is known as torsional vibration. As the name implies, there is a twisting motion associated with this oscillation. Specifically, these two legs end up traveling in opposite directions as they oscillate out of the plane of the instrument. Finally, there is longitudinal oscillations. These are essentially compression waves that travel along the length of the instrument. Based on these three modes of vibration, we would expect to see that the sound of the triangle is comprised primarily of three different frequencies. However, what we find is very different. A power spectrum created from an audio file of a regular triangle hit, such as this one, shows not three, but a multitude of frequencies, many of which are very close together and have very similar amplitudes. Looking at this graph, it is difficult to determine what the fundamental frequency would be. This wide range of frequencies with similar peaks is why the triangle is considered an instrument of indeterminate pitch. In order to make some sense out of this spectrum, I attempted to isolate the different types of vibration so I would be able to determine where these various pitches come from. Interestingly, the vibrations that were the hardest to visualize turn out to be the easiest to isolate. To excite the longitudinal wa waves, there are two main methods that can be used. The first is simply to strike the triangle on one end. The second method, which provides a slightly cleaner sound, involves getting a little bit of a sticky substance, such as cello rosin on your fingers, and then rapidly stroking the instrument. As I said, this second method produces a slightly cleaner sound, and thus I used it primarily for my investigation. The spectrum from the longitudinal waves is considerably different from what we saw with the full spectrum. As can be seen, there is one major frequency associated with this type of vibration at 897 hertz, and a number of smaller peaks that occur elsewhere in the spectrum. It isn't until we overlay the full spectrum of a tr regular triangle hit that we see where the peak frequency fits into the full sound. The fact that the frequency has a much taller peak when isolated as compared to the full spectrum indicates that this frequency is indeed the major longitudinal vibration of the triangle. If we take a closer look at the region where those minor peak frequencies had appeared in the longitudinal spectrum, we see that they correspond to much larger peaks. It is therefore reasonable to assume that these minor peaks were non-longitudinal oscillations that still managed to become excited. Next, let's investigate the transverse oscillations. In order to excite nice, clean, transverse oscillations, it is best to hit the triangle on the edge that has both corners closed. But before we do that, let's take a look at the high-speed footage of this type of hit. From this footage, recorded at 9100 frames per second, we can determine the major frequency involved by counting the number of frames it takes to complete one oscillation. 
It takes somewhere between 16 and 18 frames. This corresponds to a range of roughly 60 Hz, which is marked in red on the spectrum. As is evident, the peak frequency falls nicely in this range, and from an analysis of the audio recording, this peak occurs at 553.7 Hz. When the full spectrum is overlaid, we see something remarkable. The peak transverse frequency, which we see in both the spectrum and the high speed, has essentially no presence in the full sound. Instead, the frequency of 1807 Hz has the largest amplitude in the regular hit, with three or four other strong frequencies also appearing. This seems to indicate that the transverse overtones are excited by a normal triangle strike, but not necessarily the fundamental mode. The torsional vibrations proved a bit of a problem to isolate. I found that I was unable to excite the torsional vibrations without also exciting large transitive ones. By striking the triangle perpendicular to the plane of the instrument, both types of oscillation get excited, and I was unable to get a relatively clean audio file. By overlaying the three good power spectrums, we can summarize the contributions of these two types of oscillation. Longitudinal oscillations seem to contribute largely in only one frequency, while transitive oscillations contribute to a number of peaks. But what about the full spectrum peaks that do not correspond to either of these vibrations? Can we assume that they come from the torsional oscillations? Not quite. By striking the triangle on one of its two free legs, as is typically done for a musical triangle hit, traveling waves that bounce between the two ends are introduced, which may be responsible for some of these remaining frequencies. Now you know how the various types of vibration contribute to the remarkably complex sound of this instrument, and you can more fully appreciate what is involved in creating that characteristic shimmer.